could. Callie? Sydney? <clears throat> Bailey? Oops. Callie? Good. <clears throat> Callie? Yes. Good girl. That's good. I'm just practicing a little bit of Kelly. Yes. A little recall. Good girl. And a little bit of stationing. So we have Sydney and Bailey. So Sydney, and Bailey, and Kelly. And everybody waits their turn. Nobody pushes in on anybody. And everybody gets to their piece and they get uh, a respectful distance, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So right there, Bailey like sat right on her foot and she didn't have any, um, you know, yesterday she probably would have backed right off of that and been a little weirded out. But today she's like, oh, that's totally fine. So she's getting a lot more comfortable just with the dogs in general. And that's what you want to do. Yes. That the way she gave her that kind of second look there. I would reward that because she looked at her funny. She's walking with me. She's going kind of quick, but she didn't, um, good. That's better. Yes. But she didn't get, get uh, ner like nervy or anything like that. So we can reinforce that. Good. Can you lay down? Good downs. Callie down. Good. Oh, you guys are so smart. So smart. Yeah. Yes. Good girl. That's good. <laughs> Bailey, come. Yes, good. So she looks at them. She gets the food. She's like pretty cool. It's just like if she feels like they're sniffing too long, but she's learning now, like, oh, I have the opportunity to back up and this woman will understand that I'm uncomfortable and she will make sure that those dogs don't sniff me <clears throat> like I'm watching, right? So that I can be, yes, so that I can be proactive in, yes, gauging her comfort level and basically like anything these dogs do right now that happens around her I'm reinforcing her for uh especially now when it's even close right in her personal space because that's what's going to make um dogs less there we go so get some sniffing now Sydney sat she didn't want it but I'm gonna reward her for doing the sniff because that's a pro-social behavior it's a good girl <clears throat> We're just getting ready to have dinner now, so. Yeah. So everybody wait. I'm going to get the, and open the cupboard. Everybody waits back. Good. Back. Good. Good girl. So that nobody crowds in and nobody gets <clears throat> um, jealous or possessive. Everybody stays with their faces and let me put the phone down for a second here so I can get the food and for staying in their spaces yes they get their rewards and it's Bailey this one's for you so one fell on the floor but it fell in um in uh her vicinity in uh, Callie's vicinity and she didn't see it so Sydney just got it now so Bailey's going to make sure it's not there <laughs> Good girl. But again, I just want to normalize for her, like, other dogs sniffing her. And for her to be, basically what we're looking to do in that situation is we want her to become optimistic with every dog, whether they're familiar or not. And that doesn't mean she has to play with them. That doesn't mean she has to be their best friend. Just has to mean that she's not expecting a bad outcome because she's had a bad outcome in the past. And so we want to do, yes, good job, good girl. So we want to do everything we can to um, 
prune that old perception of dogs um, that like oh, they might hurt me um, because that's not helping her at all uh, <clears throat> in general and just end in with and in with other dogs so but also it's a stressful thing it's like someone that it's like a person that is very nervous around people people just like dogs are in a lot of different places we go and so it's difficult to um not have a lot of stress pile on kelly yes good girl she's she's sniffing the food there the food cover and i'm just gonna call her and she turns right away so i'll reward that but just it's a little tiny thing little distractions like that every time i call her off of sniffing something in the house that's a point that's a win and a victory for every time I need to call her in a more difficult situation simply because it gives me points and it puts it puts uh, um, it puts credit in the bank so to speak Callie yes good girl so there again you got the quick turn excellent good job so we're conditioning we really want the name to be super conditioned Give Sydney and Bailey one piece each. And we really want the YES to be super conditioned as well. Yes, good girl. So a little sniffing again. Good job. Kelly. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yes, good girl. So I've just been teaching her that to touch my hand with um, that little noise I was making, which is what we call an intermediate bridge. And that's basically just... Um, going to let her know that she's on the right track to a YES, which is a reward marker. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yes, good girl. She's so smart too. She gets it once, one time and she, she's got it. She's good. Good girl. <laughs> and so I want to prime this um, sound for use in other circumstances as well, but there is a rule. And that rule is that we can't just start using it in, in places and with things where she's, and this goes for everything, but particularly when we're conditioning something new, we can't just use it uh, in a place where she's uncomfortable or like, you know, when she's, uh, we need to develop it first in a way that it makes her feel really good and about things that she already likes or is neutral about. So like if I have, you know, if I have like a, old slipper here that's getting thrown in the garbage so I'm gonna put it behind my back when I bring it out I'm gonna say what it is slipper yes she looks at it I mark and I reward right and what I can with that that's that's this is two different parts so the fir the first part is that bridge the intermediate bridge so this one D -d 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 -d. yes good girl that's the intermediate bridge and if she were to stop part way to me, I would stop the bridge immediately. And because of the nature of the noise, it would be very clear that the bridge had stopped. So she would have to correct her behavior to get me to start the bridge again so that she knows she's on track to the YES again. D -d 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 -d. Yes, good girl. <laughs> good girl. So she tried it with the paw and I uh, stopped it and she tried something different and it worked. Yes. Good, so just rewarding her here for staying comfortable and staying put, even with Sydney kind of wrapping around her front there. Bailey's still hanging out over there, like, where's dinner? <laughs> yes, good. And that time she even was like, oh, I'll come with you. Good girl. Good, I'll come with you. Yeah, okay, here's one, one of yours, Sydney. Yeah, there you go. We'll give Bailey a reward for staying calm <clears throat> but see this is this is what we are creating this is what we need to build at home when she comes home for the first couple of weeks at, because it's going to be like a little boot camp for her at home so you need to have the food on you at all times i just have don't mind my um garbage area here recyclables and whatnot um with the uh, gate for so dogs can't access it of course but i just have her kibble here so this what what's left here um i give at the end of the day when i'm done all of her training sessions and i use it in sessions and i use it throughout the day um and just our just living 
you know? So, like, yes. Good girl. <laughs> what is she doing? Just these little situations. Because I need to condition the YES. And I need to get her to start becoming optimistic with other dogs. And I need her to start to realize that the value is with the person that has the leash and the food, not in the rest of the environment. The people across the street that she sees or the person walking a dog or, you know, whatever the case might be. <clears throat> and as I said, her arousal is more demand based, not necessarily um it is excitement based, but it's also demand based. It's more like, uh, I want something and I'm not getting it. So her arousal shoots up. That could be wanting to someone to pet her and greet her and they're not doing it, you know, or quickly enough for her, or they're not close enough to do it, or they're just walking by and they have no interest in doing it. And she's, you know, barking at them cause she wants to say hello or whatever, but really you're just walking by. Yes. Good girl. <clears throat> um, but we need to make it really, really, really clear to her where the value is. And in order to do that, we need to have the food on us when she's out. And we're going to, you just use, this is, I'm just using, like I said, this is her normal food that you sent. And I'm using that throughout the day. And at the end of the day, I give her what's left into a bowl and that's her meal. Um, but we start first thing in the morning when I get her up. Um, and I reward her, uh, we do our, you know, our waiting at the doors, um, for safety, going in and out, that kind of thing. She's getting really awesome at that. I'll do a little video of that as well, um, uh, probably tomorrow just to give you the demonstration, although it's very, very easy to do, and she's caught on very fast. So, yes, good girl. So just while I'm yapping away, reward for the dogs all just hanging out because they know that it's time to be fed. So for them to all just be chilling out, for her to not be barking in demand, to put the food in the bowl and that kind of thing, that's exactly what I want, right? And you've seen a little bit, like a little wine here and stuff like that, right? But that's all right, right? Yesterday, it was like bark fast, like, you know, and that's, that's what's worked for her. Um, and if she continues, and that's something else we have to think about is, we have to prune reinforcement from old patterns. So if she's barking at you for something, you you need to look for the opportunities to reward instead of in the things that she's already doing so that she can choose to do them more often, especially, yes, good job, especially in situations where she really needs that help with the arousal and the, and the mindfulness and, and better make and being able to make better decisions. Because when a dog is in a uh, high arousal, the decision-making is gone. That's there's none. It's not there at that point. Sniffing. Yes. Good job, honey. So I'm normalizing all of these things. I'm normalizing walking on the leash and we don't move forward if, if, if there's tension on it. I'm normal or if you're not in the right, at this point, it's if you're not in the right spot with me. Um, and uh, yesterday it was just if there's tension um, at the first part of the day, then we move to we want you in the, this specific spot. And the expectation rises as we go a little bit at a time so that the dog can have overwhelming success at each level so that they are very confident when we change and add levels to the process. Callie. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. So that's the food cupboard. All the food is in there, right? Oh, Bailey grabbed that one. Good girl. But yeah. And so we are normalizing things in the environment. So like distractions, you know, people that pop up, uh, cars that drive by, anything that gets her attention off of us, we can reward her for just looking at calmly because then she sees the value lies here with us, not over there with any distraction. Um, and we're not competing against the environment this way. We're not trying to get obedience commands to get her to stay focused on us. We're just rewarding her for staying calm and with us and attentive to us. But at the same time, she can look at those other things. If she, you know, um, we just don't want the 
uh, excess arousal and demanding type of stuff like the, the barking and um, the pulling and the you know jumping out forward lunging out on the leash towards something she wants um like today that was yes good girl that was with a squirrel on our walk today that was with a squirrel ran across the street <clears throat> and you know of course her first thought is just bing to go chase it so um that's what we want to do good sniff good girl that's what we want to do we want to normalize every part of life and uh, connect it to us and being connected to us and food because food is versatile it's easy to bring it anywhere it's easy to dole out any time I don't always hand it to her often especially once she goes home and there's not other dogs it's good to toss it and a few pieces at a time as well because and especially um in situations where uh, you know, the, de the demand on her is a little bit higher, right? Um, but what, that's what we're doing. We're normalizing, we're conditioning, and we need to remove reinforcement from us and other people in some of the behaviors that she does. So like barking, if she's barking at me for something, um, unless, you know, it's to go outside and I know it's to go outside, then we go outside. That's different. It's not that I don't want a dog to bark. I do want the dog to bark. I don't want the dog to bark indiscriminately or demandingly or uh, incessantly. And so if the dog is barking a lot, <clears throat> um, then they're being reinforced for it in some way. They have to be. And so with most people, that's either telling the dog to, dog to stop looking even looking at them with some dogs and especially with demanding type of arousal even just making eye contact yes can get that dog to ramp right up again and further their barking and stuff and um so that's why we want to normalize we want to make value for all these calmer behaviors so that she's going to start to choose those ones instead because she's not getting what she needs anymore from barking at people or or you know whatever jumping on people barking at people or whatever the case might be insert behavior here doesn't matter what it is but if we continue to reinforce it even even in a negative way with attention because for her, any attention is atten is positive, right? If if she's barking and you, um, you know, tell her to be quiet and she doesn't be quiet, like she just that that's it's not a command for her. She just keeps going or she stops for a second and then goes again. Yes, then that's how we know we're not doing anything to help the dog. We're just can we're just reinforcing those connections that she's made that we don't like so that's what we're doing we're replacing and we're not replacing with obedience we're replacing with normal behaviors that she can choose so that she feels like she has control over the situation she and so that she has develops self-control and so that day-to-day -day life is much less um kind of like, I guess, unpredictable, and she has a lot more optimism for different interactions and a lot less, uh, then a lot more mindfulness in her behavior and her um, response to different uh, stimuli, such as people wanting to meet people and stuff like that. So everyone's quite calm now. That's good. I think she might even lay down here. But uh, I just wanted to do quite like an explanation type of video just showing you a little bit of like the stuff I'd yes so she doesn't typically like to walk right around the dogs like right past them yesterday she didn't want to do that at all so for now when she walks past them you kind of saw how she edged herself out to the edge and like her jaw closed that's that tension showing and so I would reward her like hey good job you were a little bit nervous but you did it anyway awesome and so the next time that she is like, oh, I got to go through there. It's not, it's less and less and less and less and less and less and less of a thing. And um, this goes for not just my dogs, but because I'm doing this with my dogs, 
um, and it's an ongoing day-to-day -day thing, um, this can apply the exact same way. There we go. Yes. This can apply the exact same way to other dogs. So you can use the exact same techniques. And that's what I'd like. That's why I'm making this video to show you that the techniques we'll be using with uh, distractions on with uh, the walking and with um, reactivity, the barking, that kind of thing is the exact same as the techniques we can use with other dogs. We just need to change up the reinforcement schedule. So we need to make sure she's not getting reinforcement from the behaviors that are her current patterned ones. So her default reactive responses and start making new connections to different behaviors of her choice that we like a lot better. And then what we'll start to see is what's called spontaneous progress, where the dog will start uh, you know, just doing things that they wouldn't normally do in circumstances or times that they wouldn't normally do them, like laying down, like, you know, um, when they know that it's going to be like laying down that relaxed when they know I'm about to feed them instead of, you know, barking at me and bugging at me and that kind of thing. Right. So, but I've created this. Yes. In, um, in her, and again, just using her normal food for this at this point and there is a hierarchy for the food right so like uh we will at times want to use treats um and that's why sometimes we want to use several pieces of food because more foods are better than less you know um higher value food is better than kibble or lower value food dry biscuits you know um treats are gonna be sydney sydney come good girl there you go. Yes. Good. Yes. Good girl, Callie. So she stays relaxed. Very good. But yeah, um, I just wanted to kind of explain that. I know this is very long, but there is um, a lot of conceptual information to be had here. And um, this is the kind of thing we want, we want, we do, we need to do to truly change behavioral responses, to truly change the way the dog thinks and feels and perceives things so that their behaviors change with it. And we can open up the door so widely for the dog by letting them have choices versus, you know, giving them, this is the choice. You got to sit to, to meet somebody and that's it. Period. Um, it's kind of an, un, just as for that as an example, it's an unnatural behavior for a dog. She's very relaxed now. It's perfect. Um, it's very unnatural behavior for a dog. They can't greet someone when they're sitting. And that doesn't actually change the way they think or feel. Typically, the dog, if you ask them to sit, they'll, they may or may not sit at the time. If you have food right in their face, you could maybe bribe them to sit. Um, uh, and or if you use the leash and kind of like molded them and held them into a sit, you might be able to like, but at that point, they're usually over threshold. So even if they will sit and typically what happens is they'll sit and someone might pet them on the head or something. And then you'll say you'll the dog will get up from the sit and they'll be just as aroused or even more so than when they when then when you put them into it. And so that doesn't change anything. Right. We need to change the actual perception, the feeling, and the response, the emotions that she has surrounding that, because then we get natural behavior change. And when we let the dog have various choices, so I can stand here and greet this person as long as I don't jump on them, basically as long as I don't jump on them or bark at them. It's an arousal thing, right? So, and that's going to be different for different people. And that's something that you can decide on later and that's not something yes so like there's a loud truck out there and as i said right now i'm just marking and rewarding things that capture attention in the environment because what i want is for a dog to see things in the environment again not as something that i'm competing against their against for their attention but something that makes me um notice them, something that makes me reinforce them, something that makes things happen with 
us over here. Nothing happens over there. You're, you know, you're not getting reinforcement from that kind of stuff anymore. You can bark at it if you want. The person's still not looking at you. We're still not going over there. Um, you know what I mean? And quickly, uh, and she's a very smart dog. So very quickly, um, if you are consistent with these principles, um, and these concepts and having the food on you so that you can consistently observe and react, be proactive really in, uh, you know, um, reinforcing new patterns of behavior in the littlest ways, right? That's where we make the biggest changes. It's the exact same as people. Um, the smallest things where we start from is how that's how we conquer the largest problems we have. And in her case, these aren't huge problems, but it's, it's the exact same. We got to start at the bottom of the mountain anyway, because if we start at the top, well, we have the dog that is over that that's over threshold and they can't function enough to learn. Right. And then we have to use a lot of correction or a lot of obedience or a lot of, um, control. And we want the dog to learn how to just be a dog and make good choices and us not have to have control like that constant command and stuff like that. So what we're looking to do is to teach her how to think for herself and make effective decisions instead of what to think and what decisions to make. So hopefully that, um, culminate how hopefully that sums up the culmination of this very long probably boring video but it is important because it is the crux and the key to what we are doing here and um it's going to this is going to be the one thing <clears throat> and the behavioral downs um that are going to help Callie the most in my uh experience so far um, but we're going to keep working at it and tomorrow we'll have some more. Yes. <laughs> tomorrow we'll have some more videos and whatnot, but this is a long one. So I'm going to cut it off now, but today theory, lots of theory for you guys to think on 